Welcome to Stock Shots. Today is Thursday, March the 26th, 2009. Our guest today is Kevin Kerr of Kerr Trade International. You can visit Kevin on the web and get his global commodities alert at kerrtrade.com. Listen in now as I interview Kevin Kerr. Hey, Kevin. Thanks so much for being back with us on Stock Shots this morning. Fantastic to be here. Thanks. Hey, Kevin. It's been really crazy, and we're finally beginning to see a little stability in oil prices. Uh, we, we've had forecasts on the show from, from oil won't go over 60 until we'll, we'll see some level of speculation that kind of rivals last summer uh, that will drive the price of oil up. Where do you stand with regard to oil prices? Well, like you said, it, it's been very, very volatile. And, you know, the, the best thing here is to step back and take a look at the bigger picture. You know, we still have plenty of oil supply uh, around, but we've been long in my portfolio. We've been long crude using uh, option spreads because of that uncertainty. And um, it's actually paid off quite quickly. So there are, uh, are ways to make money in this market. Um, having said that, you know, at this point, I'm probably going to close out that position. Now, we're talking about March of 2010 crude. The closer in uh, months are very, very volatile and very difficult to trade. Bottom line is I think that because of all the oil supply we have on hand and because we're really not seeing the job picture or industrial machine really begin to fire up quite yet, you're probably going to see oil get up around 55. Maybe that's the high for the front months, and then you see it trend back down for a while until we can start eroding some of that supply. Now, the one thing that does concern me is we are seeing a lot of the product usage. We're seeing less gasoline being made, and we're seeing less heating oil. That's clearly because uh, refiners just don't have the market to do it. Um, so that's why the crude is building up, and, and you know, so it's a catch-22. But at the end of the day, we're going to have more driving this summer. Uh, even if people are out just looking for jobs, um, you know, the demand will be there, and I think we'll slowly see uh, those supplies get dwindled away. And by fall, uh, we really could have a, a crisis situation because these refiners will not have made enough heating oil going into the wintertime. Now, what about natural gas? I mean, natural gas just got obliterated, and I think that was partly because I had invested so heavily. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it personally. <laughs> I got I got flushed out of that trade. But if we get into that crisis situation in the fall, will the the lack of those supplies pull that gas up with it? Well, this is a real tricky market, and I, for, you know, just to be clear, I'm long natural gas as well, and I've taken that ride with you. But I'm long the December of 09 gas, and I have, I have a lot of confidence that from these levels we'll come back. Now, again, we use an option spread on this. So down here, and looking at these prices, I'm going to buy back the short side of my spread. Doing that, I'm going to be long now the hour I call. Bottom line is I think prices will move higher, especially as we move into winter, for the same reasons that I think uh, crude oil will. Uh, we're just, you know, have a, a such a low price. There's a lot more upside potential, I think, than downside from this level. Do you see all of this money that the government is printing? And we've had the arguments back and forth on the show about inflation or deflation. We've had people argue that we're in a period of deflation because the, the bank's balance sheets are getting crushed. And they're arguing that all of this money that the government is putting out there is simply rebuilding the bank's balance sheet. But do you think that this money is going to cause inflation? This is a case of the cure is worse than the disease, you know. I mean, I understand the argument that we need to put the paper out there during this difficult time, and that'll, you know, that's what the, the cure is right now. But the longer-term illness, um, this cancer of debt, is just going to explode. And eventually, whether it's us or our children, we're going to have to be faced with this problem. But ultimately, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer, whether you're a genius economist or not, that if you print all this money, you're going to have inflation somewhere down the road. And most all the economists agree on that. They just say right now we need to print more money. It's just very short-sighted and, unfortunately, I think putting off the inevitable, which is fixing these problems we have and having to take some pain. And, uh, you know, people don't want to do that, and it's not popular politically. So here we go with, you know, trying to save companies that should have shut down a long time ago and, um, you know, and writing checks that we can't cash. Yeah, you know, yesterday the uh, the auctions were... were <laughs> I believe somewhat of a surprise for the market. There is just not as much demand for the debt as, as uh, there really needs to be to finance all of this mess. Well, absolutely. I mean, the appetite for debt around the world, especially U.S. debt, is, is dwindling. I mean, you know, China's uh, China's once again doing their overtures of saying they want a different reserve currency, which, of course, they've done before, and they're, they're in an untenable situation, too, with the U.S. They depend on us as much as we depend on them. 
But at the end of the day, it's, it's very worrisome as far as uh, treasuries and certainly for the dollar. I, I mean, with the currencies around the world right now, it's really a race to the bottom. I would say that, you know, uh, it's not, you know, which one is better, it's which one's the least bad. And right now the U.S. is probably a little ahead of the curve, but I don't think that's going to continue, especially with what we've seen in, from the Fed the last couple of weeks. You know, I think that uh, I lost a lot of money not realizing the least bad theory because, you know, we were looking at what was going on. We were trying to short the dollar, and it held up amazingly well. So, uh, But I, I think that uh, I think you're right. At some point, it has to fall. It's a house of cards, you know. I mean, it, you know, you, again, you can't print this much money and give it away and expect uh, it not to have to mop up those dollars later. And that creates inflation. When you have a lot more money in the system, you can't just easily get rid of it. And I think the Fed just doesn't have a mop big enough to clean it all up. Uh, it, it's just, you know, what are they going to do? Raise rates? Uh, you know, that's that's a long way off. Um, so, you know, it's it's a tricky situation to be in. When I talk about politically unpopular, I, I think the toughest thing in this equation may be to raise rates as soon as things start to to indicate that that they're moving upward. Because at that point. There's still going to be a lot of angry, unemployed people that don't want to see those rates go up. Well, exactly. And you're going to have, and I believe, in the commodity sector, which obviously we're talking about energy and food, I think you're going to see those prices continue to climb. And the reason is simple. We're not going to have as much supply. You know, a lot of people were angry. I wrote an article recently. I was talking about how oil is going to go back to $300. Now, I didn't really mean it's going to 300 next week. I meant it's probably going to climb back up fairly quickly. And, and you know, we're not doing anything with prices at these levels in the, when they were in the 30s, now 50s. But, you know, a, any of these prices that we had wished for when oil was at 147, we talked about drilling, we talked about building more refineries, talked about alternative energies, all talk. None of that is being done now. Um, and, in fact, uh, it's pretty much come to a standstill, and a lot of those alternative companies are out of business. So what happens when demand does come back online, which everybody wants because everybody wants the, the jobs and everything to flow back in, that's going to require energy, and we'll have wasted all this time and built no more infrastructure, so we'll have all the same problems we had before. And that tells me that we'll have higher prices. Oh, I agree with you, absolutely. You know, we're down here near the, the Hainesville Shale natural gas mine. And it's quite evident that these guys can pull offline uh, faster than they can put production back online. Exactly. And, exactly. you know, there, there's a lot that goes into the leasing and the cultivating and getting ready to drill. For the rest of this great interview, visit our website, www.stockshots.tv. That's www.stockshots.tv. Thank you for listening.